Welcome to School Zone, the show all about your local school districts here in the White Mountains. I'm your host, John Larson. Today we have the Director of the Maintenance and Transportation for the Sholo School District, Sean West, with us. My name's Sean West, and I've been with the Sholo Unified School District for four years. Um, my kids all go to Sholo schools. My wife's an ER nurse here at Summit, and uh, we have nine children. Nine children mm -hmm. in the house all at one time. Plus, right now we have four nieces and nephews, so there's 13 children in the house uh, one time. Good for you. Yeah, yeah it's I, great. I think I knew. I think I knew you guys were were taking on some extra stuff. I hope that all works out. Uh, so. I don't know, most people probably haven't heard of SFB, uh, nor do they have any intimate knowledge about what that is. So tell us what that term, obviously that's an acronym, tell us what that stands for and uh, about the different projects we have going on here in the district. Sure. So what the SFB actually stands for is for the Arizona School Facilities Board. Um, they're a branch of the state government that um, deals specifically with school funding. Um, several years ago they did a, um, most all school districts that you've heard of the, the fundings of capital and m and um, Well several years ago the school facilities board decided to get involved to uh, help school districts determine what types of projects um, could be funded at a state level um, versus taking it out of our own capital and m and um, budgets. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, there's a process that we go through um, to get those monies, um, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Basically, this is a situation where they have money set aside for very specific and certain needs and uses in school districts. And as a school district, correct me if I'm wrong, do we apply for those kind of a, I, I don't know that it's necessarily a, a grant. Would you use that word? That's what they call them. They call them building renewal grants. Um, and yeah, we apply for each specific thing. There's minimum standards that the state has set forth for us to use. It's all about health and safety of our schools. Um, so we go through the process of saying, okay, we have a deficiency in this area. Um, I go through, we have to have assessments taken care of. So I'll get a hold of um, like a contractor, for example, say, hey, can you give us an assessment on this project? From there, we do the application process to the state, saying, you know, hey, we have this deficiency, and this is about how much it's going to cost us, and then they'll either approve or deny the the grant application. So, give us an example of some of the projects that SFB would get involved with, um, and may, maybe some of those that they would wouldn't get involved with. Sure. So. One that they would not get involved with, it's like for example, they won't, they're not going to purchase new school buses for us. They're not going to purchase lawnmowers. Um, they're not going to get us new cars, anything of that nature. Um, but they will take care of, as I can, something a project that we have just recently done with the SFB is the Whipple Ranch roof. And if you remember, a couple years ago, that roof was a is a massive metal roof that leaked everywhere. Lots of um, with those leaks, we did an assessment to determine what was wrong with the roof. Um, through that assessment, it, the conclusion was that it had failed. Um, it, the, the metal on top of the roof was separating. There was a bunch of missing um, fasteners and things of that nature. We just could not get the roof to stop leaking. So the SFB paid to have that building re redone. Um, and the reason we went away from the metal, the metal roof to the shingles is because now the shingles that are out have a longer warranty period. Um, especially up here in this area, metal roofs for a house is good because you know houses are pretty small. But you're talking about like a 44,000 square foot structure mm -hmm. to have one metal building. Right. You know, when it has a leak, you know where does the leak? Because it could be leaking from, you know, the opposite Over side here, of the building. Running down you here, know. by the time it actually comes, infiltrates the building. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so that was a main SFB project that we just had done. Um, was Whipple Ranch roof. Another project that we've had done from the SFB is our high school gym. Um, there was a bunch of water intrusion from underneath the campus, which made the plain surface of our gym unsafe. Um, we had to actually cut out parts of the gym floor to get it to lay down, um, to even make it playable. Um, Wasn't it buckling and coming up? It was. Out? It was right. buckling up because on a wooden floor, there, there's about a quarter inch or so space on each um, 
each uh, perimeter. No, yes, perimeter. thanks. Perimeter. I couldn't remember. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But this roof is supposed the is supposed to shift. Well, it has expanded to all four corners of that wall to where it buckled. Um, so the SIP just spent almost two million dollars to remove that gym floor, and then we put a brand new vapor barrier um, underneath it so that that process won't happen again. Mm -hmm. it, that floor should never buckle again. Um, but we just did that. They did an HVAC system upgrade in the gym because it had swamp coolers, mm -hmm. which was what was a huge player in I'm sure. buckling Inter that floor. Introducing you know, moisture, moisture into a dry right. space. And then the other issue that we had there was the bleachers. So the high school gym has now, it now has brand new bleachers, a brand new three court floor, and a brand new HVAC actual, not swamp cooler, but DX cooling is what it's called. Yeah, so now so now what we're able to do in there is we're able to control the indoor climate so that uh, at least that does not, coupled with the new vapor barrier, now we're not going to have any sort of issues with that wooden floor Correct. absorbing moisture and moving and buckling and whatnot like it did. Correct. Yeah, yeah, that was a, that was a rough one. Uh, that was a rough one. Um, what, uh, what, what else have we got? Uh, have you got, um, have you got any other projects that are currently, uh, in process? What, what, what else have we got going on? We do. So another project we just finished is we have, we just completed some weatherization projects. So if you notice the high school itself got painted, um, the block of that school, the water was actually coming from outside, moving into the inside because the block was no longer waterproof. On the exterior? Mm hmm Okay. So the high school was weatherized, and then we also did a weatherization project at Whipple Ranch, which included new windows, and we also did a weatherization project on the junior high, which also included new windows. Um, and all three of those schools were for the same exact purpose. The water was coming in from the wall hmm. into the classrooms. Um, so that's been eliminated. And then we just did a new roof over the um, kitchen and um, I guess it's like the wood shop and the weight room of the junior high. And then we also did one over the boys and girls locker room at the junior high. So that's a new roof. Um, we have some assessments in process, progress right now for the auditorium for a new roof there because it has some leaks. We just concluded an assessment for the high school roof. Um, it has failed. So we are going to come through and um, the architect that we use is actually working with the local contractor here in Sholo who um, is a contractor for that metal building. Because the high school is not actually a brick building. It's mm -hmm. a metal building mm -hmm. with a brick facade. So um, that roof, it can't become shingles. It has to be whatever that structure can hold. Yeah. So he's working with a local company here um, to determine the best fix for that roof. And then we just had Nicholas Homestead assessed. It also needs a new roof. So we will be putting a new roof on that building um, within the next year. Um, and then we have um, we have a couple other ones that we're working on. We, we're getting ready to assess Nicholas Homestead as well as Linden for weatherization, which will also include new windows. Okay, so um, let me, I may be backing up a little bit, but, but let's make sure that we understand that when we apply for these grants, mm -hmm. that these are not anything that we're tied to paying back or it basically doesn't cost the district anything. We're, we're getting monies that the state has set aside for school improvement. Correct. And they're basically paying for these uh, fixes and upgrades. Yes. Right? So walk me through the steps of, um, I don't know, you choose a, you choose a project and, and mm -hmm. I don't think it really matters, but I want to know when you find something that you feel is deficient mm -hmm. and you say, okay, I want to present that to the SFB. Mm -hmm. Walk me through that. Sure. So like... I mean, you're walking through the hallways. You see something mm -hmm. or you're walking outside, you see something. That or just look at work orders. We also have... I have a bunch of these binders in my office. There's one for every school. We actually have inspection sheets that my guys and myself will go to the campuses and we'll do inspections. And if we start to see some deficiencies, like, you know, this is what it should look like, 
but it's really not doing well. And then we'll look at those work orders, like uh, for example, the high school roof. We have been on top of that high school roof, I can't tell you how many times um, since I've been here, because it just leaks and leaks. We've looked for those leaks, we've tried to repair those leaks. We've had roofers come and get on that roof, and they've done repairs to that roof, and that still has leaks. Um, so we try to exhaust all of our own efforts before we move to the SFB, um, but that's where it comes from. So as we are inspecting these schools, walking these campuses, um, looking for these deficiencies, then I just put a kind of a little report together. What I have, what I see is wrong. I'll put in the application process. Um, some things are quick and easy. Some things take a long time, right? So, like for an example, we had a freezer went out at Whipple Ranch. Um, you know, freezers are kind of important. We store food in those freezers for the students to eat. Um, we went to the SFB. It's like, look, our compressor's gone out. We need a new. We need this to be repaired. They approved that project immediately. We worked with a local vendor here in town. Um, had the new compressor put in, and then the SFB will pay that. Um, pay that fund. So that, that's a quick and easy step. Mm -hmm. The high school roof, for an example, is the long one. Like we just finished the assessment, now we're going to design phase. So as soon as I get the design um, contract from the, from the architect, we'll apply for the construction of the new roof. Um, so what Whipple Ranch took, you know, two phone calls, the high school is going to take months to uh, get this finalized and approved to, to be finished. So how many people uh, are involved in the SFB that make the decision as to whether this is something they're willing to help with or not? Sure, so to begin with, it's myself and we have a liaison that's um, attached to our district. Um, and her and I have phone calls constantly, like tomorrow for an example. I have a conference with her to go over all of our projects, which ones can we close, which ones are good, you know, where are we at with them, we have to give status reports. Um, once her and I determine that this is a need, it'll go to the school facilities board, which is a panel of five. It's an actual board that they run for office or some are appointed by the governor, um, and they meet monthly, just like our school board does. Mm -hmm. And there they will look at all of the application stuff and make sure all the paperwork is in line. Um, if they want further information, they'll let that liaison know that they want further information. But typically, by the time it gets to the school facilities board itself, um, between the liaison and myself, she's already hammered it for all the documents that need to be happening. We have a book mm -hmm. that's probably about an inch and a half thick with all the rules and guidelines that they want, and we just follow those procedures. Um, and typically, they, because it's a deficiency that's in their minimum standards, they'll they'll approve the, the project. So they have, the, when you say minimum standards, they, they say that this is the way it ought to be at its very worst? Correct. So, and so if you present something that is worse than, than what their standards are, uh, then they, they look at that pretty hard? They, could? they do. And like, so for example, some of, the, some of the standards are trying to change because in their minimum standards it states that school districts above 5,000 feet don't get HVAC system, they don't get DX cooling, they get swamp coolers. Mm -hmm. Our superintendent, Mr. Housley, is on a committee for the SFB to go over the minimum standards and to rewrite them to make them more modern for us because, you know, we all live in Sholo. Mm -hmm. You know, we know that it's hot here. You know, just because we're up in the pines doesn't mean it doesn't get to be 100 degrees. Mm -hmm. And when we have swamp coolers running into a school, you know, it has odors. You know, some of the kids, it's it, you can't cool the school enough mm. with a swamp cooler. So, you know, especially when monsoon season yeah, comes, right? Yeah, it's inefficient. So those standards are actually being rewritten now, and Mr. Housley is a part of that process, which is, that's a good thing for us. Yeah, sure, you bet. And, and, and not only for us, but obviously the surrounding districts who are... Everybody over 5,000 feet. Yeah, they're, they're probably experiencing the same not things. the same thing. It's very similar, right? Absolutely. Um, so, I don't, how is, is there anything else that you can tell us that the district, how the district has benefited from the SFB? Is there anything else? We covered everything that, that they've, uh, done or? 
in the um, process of doing for us? So we've had several projects. I mean, there's stuff that goes past. The, I know the district's had a relationship with the SFB since 2001. Um, there was a period of time between, um, I'd say like 2001 and 2015, the district didn't really use the SFB. And then in 2015, they had a couple projects, but some of those projects was at Linden School. They had some uh, septic tank issues, and they had some upgrades with that. Um, they've done drainage and site issues with us at some of our campuses. Um, our district has spent, or not, we haven't spent, the SFB has spent on our district in these last two years about $17 million um, from deficiencies, and some of those are sewer pipes. You know, I mean, it's, we have a long list of projects. We've probably had about 20 or so projects accomplished from the SFB um, in the last four years, mm -hmm. but um, we've benefited greatly from them. So this is a, a spot where I want to throw in that a few years back as a district we asked our community to support us in a bond. It's a 15 million dollar bond. We uh, as, a, as a district we set a goal that we wanted to uh, through SFB try to turn that 15 million into 20 million. Mm -hmm. And we, that was a, a goal for us in order to help improve our district. And so what you're telling me is instead of from 15 to 20, that 5 million that we were hoping for, you're telling me we've gone about 17 million above and board the 15 million that the, we were blessed with with the bond. Absolutely. And there's also more projects to come from the SFB that's going to extend those dollars further. I remember when I first got hired here, Mr. Housie and I sat down and he went over the bond with me and he showed me a bunch mm -hmm. of projects that were in that bond um, and together we were able to sit down and say, okay, I know that we can get these projects out of here and put into the SFB mm -hmm. um, and that's exactly what we did. So we, we've done everything that the, as far as I can tell, that the community's asked us to do and we've, we've extended that bond. Um, that additional $17 million. Yeah, and that's really great because some of those things that we wanted to fix with the bond, we were able to take those out, use SFB funds, and then use the funds that we had allocated for those on other upgrades within the district. Correct. So it really has been a huge, a huge upgrade for us to be able to have partnered and done so well with the SFB, which obviously is, you, you're the one that works on those and sets those up, so obviously, right. uh, you know, a lot of appreciation needs to go to you. Um, uh, is there anything in your, uh, out, out in front of you in your long term that you know you're gonna hit the SFB up for? There are, so I kind of Are you willing to share those with us? Or sure, those, yeah, no, they're not those top things secret. that we don't, well, no, not top uh, secret, but <laughs> let the cat out of the bag. Yeah, know. no, it's okay. I mean, we're gonna apply for them. I mean, we need a new roof at Cholo Junior High, just as bad as we do at the high school. Um, our buildings are old, mm -hmm. um, and these metal, you know, the metal roofs should last quite a long time but they don't up here for whatever purpose you know I don't know who, I don't know the reason why but um, so we're looking to put a new roof on the junior high we're talking about putting a new roof up on the auditorium um, we mentioned Nicholas needs a new roof we'll do that um, we have some other projects um, throughout like Linden we'd like to the weatherization we talked about there with the windows um, it's also going to need a new roof pretty soon um, I try to tap as much of the SFB dollars to us to save our budget so we don't have to spend these big dollars mm -hmm. later. Um, I am looking at a huge HVAC um, upgrade at the high school. Most of our air conditioning units are failing. They're over 20 years old. The, mm -hmm. the building was put up in 2000. Mm -hmm. um, they're at their end of life cycle. Um, there's a whole bunch of little coils that are on the inside of the um, towers that aren't being efficient as they need to be. Um, and when we just did all of our LED lighting upgrades and things of that nature, we have the new control system that we can operate remotely. It's not operating efficiently. You know, if you have a classroom at the high school, it's 80 degrees in September because we can't get that unit to respond. You know, I'm, I'm looking to spend a lot of the state's money to get us some new air conditioners so we can get our schools more, more comfortable. Is there a... Uh um, how, how do you, I, I'm assuming that you must use their grade of 
of what they term their standard of what they term is deficient. I'm assuming that's what you use when you're walking around looking at all of this and or when you're every day experiencing this room that we can't get cooled down yes. or we can't get warmed up. Yeah. You know, whichever way it works. Is that what you're using? So it is. You know, you know you know you're not going to them with something that they're going to say, well, that's not quite Exactly. So I would I would never take a product because it's it takes a lot of time. I mean, cause it, I mean, to sit down and go there, you have to fill out these documents, you know. And then I take these documents to the superintendent who who approves that document, and then we submit it to the state. Um, I wouldn't go through that process because it's it, you know I don't want to waste my time and and uh, the superintendent's time. I mean, he's a very busy person, so I don't want to waste his time. Um, so I use their standard specifically. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't go in and say, hey, I got a classroom that needs some new paint. Can you guys give me some money for that? Um, that's a district responsibility, mm -hmm. you know. Whereas if I go and say, "Hey, I've got, I have this huge crack on the foundation of my building. Can we have this inspected?" You know, they're going to come in and inspect that because that's that's a deficiency. That's a safe and health issue that they would actually take care of. Um, just the last couple of years, they've opened up. Um, they're going to start assisting districts with trip hazards inside of the schools, which would be a carpet. So you have carpet that's you know 25 years old, and it starts to rip or whatever. And there's a there's a tripping hazard. They'll actually start fixing that. That's something that they haven't done in the past. So that is now a state standard deficiency. That hey, we need to have carpet in the classrooms mm -hmm. that aren't going to let the teachers or or students trip. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be looking at some of those. Um, issues, you know, Whipple Ranch is carpet's original, right? So it's got a few tripping hazards, not very many, because the the custodial staff does a really great job at keeping our buildings maintained, mm -hmm. regardless of the age of them, and so does our maintenance department. Those those guys, there's we have four maintenance technicians, and those guys just work. I mean, they work as hard as possible to make sure that we're keeping our schools up and running to the best of our ability. So what else, what am I missing? Am I missing anything else that we need to talk about on the S SFB and, and uh, you know, understanding that, you know, also you've got these folks that work for the district that are trying to uh, stretch out the life cycle of all of these things that we that we have here at the district. And I'm not sure a lot of people realize how old some of our schools are. I mean, some sure. of our schools used to be the junior high and now we're in elementary or vice right. versa. Right, absolutely, because I One believe. used to be a high school, now it's a junior high. And right. so, you know, we do have some age issues. We do, so like uh, Nicholas Elementary, for an example, that school was built in 1972. You know, and here it's 2020. Mm -hmm. and we're trying to keep it, we're trying to keep it going. We've added a couple, they've added an addition for a cafeteria and um, some other classrooms now sit. But, um, you know, that's that's the newest part of it. You know, the junior high itself, it started construction in 1974. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these things are old. The auditorium was built in 1976. The high school's our newest building, mm -hmm. built in 2000. It's the, one of the buildings that has the most maintenance problems. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some of our older stuff is lasting and we're able to get by with it. But our high school, you know, from what I've heard, you know, it's been issues since since the day they opened, and, and I've seen those issues. Um, you know, we have some settling issues that the SFP is helping us work with. We had an architect come in to look at the structural um, stability of the school. You know, we have some plumbing issues that are going all through the high school that, you know, we have had the assessment completed, but we have to have it done in a summertime project because they're going to have to take out, you know, several feet of the floor to re redesign how the plumbing is going to operate, and that's going to take out walls. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't do that when there's kids there. They need mm -hmm. to be there, but we need to get these bathrooms done so that we have the plumbing efficiency to mm -hmm. to stop having to have plumbers come in all the time to, to take care of those types of issues. Mm -hmm. And those are they're pretty lengthy. Well, sounds like you got your work cut out for you. There's a lot to look at, a lot to do, but you've done a lot, and for that I'm grateful. I appreciate you and appreciate all you do. I appreciate you coming on today and updating us and giving us a look into uh, some of the things that uh, we're doing in the district. So I, I appreciate you being here. Welcome, John. Thank you. You bet. Thanks for joining us here on the School Zone, and we'll see you again soon.